So the plot thickens, as they say. So you know, one's looking at the uh, at uh, Leon Trotsky's place where he was assassinated in Mexico, and he had been basically offered exile by the Mexican government, convinced uh, by uh, Fridos Carlos the painter and her husband Diego Rivera, and amazing muralist. But uh, things were soon to go very, very pear shaped because it turns out that Frida Carlos had an affair with uh, Trotsky, and it was a pretty in the face for, for both uh, Diego and, and, and Trotsky's partner, there was really most people kind of knew what was going on, going on, and um, she you know she actually Frida Kahlo seemed to have quite a lot of uh, affairs, but in this particular case, um, uh, the wife gave the ultimatum: it's either her or me. And Trotsky said, "Well, you know, made you know decided that the wife was more important." And Frida Kahlo turned around and said, "Well, I you know got tired of it anyway," and. But at that point, Diego Garcia has started getting quite like anti Trotsky. They've been originally they considered themselves Trotskyites, um, especially when Trotsky was a hero of the revolution. Uh, but uh, now Diego, uh, who I suspect was actually had nothing to do with the politics whatsoever, all he was just pissed off that this guy was banging his wife uh, or his lover, and um, and, she, and and uh, Frida Carlos to, to her. Uh, credit or whatever, went out of a way to kind of, you know, made the fact that she'd had this affair and use it to kind of arrange, enrage Diego Riviera. Uh, Totsi, in the meantime, kind of also sort of largely felt that uh, basically Diego Riviera was a bit of a flake and that his politics was all over the place. And they kind of had a falling out and, and uh, Trotsky sort of tried to make amends, but it's not quite clear, but it was quite frosty about it. And this is where the plot thickens, is because when I went and had a look at where he actually died, and you start to realise that this is an incredibly fortified place. And so how did the assassin actually manage to get all the way through? Well, it's very simple. Um, it turns out that uh, Fridos Carlos actually met with the assassin. Uh, she had actually given him details about the layout of the place and, and who worked there. And he integrated himself uh, as basically a fan and got to know one of the maids and through the maid managed to get himself into the property. Um, and, and then went, you know, bang, but you know, gave Trotsky a, 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 a pick in the, a back in the pick. Now, Frida Kahlo was actually arrested and suspected, and she, and during the during the arrest, she confessed that she gave basically she met with the assassin and that she'd given him details about the layout of the particular place. But then it was basically they let her go, and it was almost like, oh no, there was all conjecture, there was nothing to it. And that's what all the, all the books say. But it's like, well, actually, I would, I would, I would beg to differ more because without that information, he couldn't have actually gone and carried out the assassination. So, um, yeah, it's kind of interesting because you know it's it, it sort of the, 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 the frustration. I feel a lot of the. Um, I don't want to say Trotskyites, but the that that sort of that that, that sort of bohemian tro- um, uh, socialism was that it was really large by people who had very oversized egos, and they again kind of you know things kind of like blew hot and cold with this particular that particular lot. Um, you know, it wasn't like for example we had Norman Norman Kirk and Norman Kirk was a very you know had his feet on the ground, and you know he was was quite clear also like about the fact that. He will say, well, actually, I don't think socialism going all the way is necessarily going to be that particular great idea, but there are definitely key components that we need to make sure that people have, and we also need the sensibility of how to run an economy. And so he was, you know, he was able to put, I would have put Norman Kirk as a centre leftist, and um, I think it's probably, you know, I'm probably, I'm, I'm probably with Norman Kirk, I mean, like, but the point of, you know, that's trying to make out also, of course, is that getting back to the original point that I make in the video is that. People who go on about the libtards and they go on about communism and whatever, or they've never obviously read a book because they don't understand that what what the consequences of the Soviet Revolution with Stalin basically murdering all of his Politburo was that it, it never got to be anywhere near the model of socialism that they actually planned, let alone evolve into this theoretical concept of communism. Uh, the moment Stalin took, took control of it, it, it veered into basically left-wing fascism and that's largely what I feel that Marxism and Stalinism, well, definitely Stalinism, because well, that's why it's called Stalinism, baby. Um, you know, and, and so these people looking around, kind of, you know, they're going, oh, you know, he's, she's just said there's a bloody communist, you know, she's, no, she's not. She she is not even centre left, you know, she is neoliberal, where she has used the branding and, and the sort of, um, you know, this sort of like uh, Frilos Carlos. 
uh, Diego Riviera Bohemian fucking flakery. So it's a nice package on the outside, but you know, in, in, the, in the case of Jacinda, it's like it very much she signed off on the Trans Pacific Partnership Agreement. It's not Norman Kirk's leaning, socialist leaning, but we're still going to be open for business. It's actually we're just going to write a blank check for the big business. And this is what people don't actually get. And you know, unfortunately, what we have in the United States is that we've got um, the model of the right wing, which is they can only understand right wing politics. It's all about money, and money. And then you have the Democrats, who are meant to be left-wing, but I'm not exactly sure, because even you two and I suggest them, in the case of Bernie you know, Sanders, was like, going, well, actually, we need to we need to lean towards a more of a socialist leaning, not, as I said, not full socialist and full head, but because of this connotations, because of all the years of Cold War and all the, all the corporate media behind it, just the taint of that saying alone was enough to actually shut them down. So we've got this problem where both both parties are basically str- in the corporate model and in the left wing are scratching their head by voting for people in Labour or Democrats going, we just can't quite figure out, you know, you know, why why are things aren't changing when they're still abducted, stuck to this corporate freaking fascist model? Um, anyway, so that's my, my little uh, ad lib to that. Uh, and, and the point is, you know, I mean, I'm a political scientist at the end of the day. I also think, and I think again where Norman Kirk was of this, is that there's a time and place. You know, there are times in the economy where you want to be leaning more towards socialism. There are times when you're leaning, leaning more towards the centre. I don't think you even want to go too far to the right at all because the end result is you end up, uh, you know, it, it's, it's I guess, I guess an element of, of government is actually the ability to realise to keep tapping it and, and not actually go to reactionary left wing or right wing because when you follow both those models, they inevitably, you know, turn into an Arubarus, which is the great snake that eats its own tail, and you end up with the end result is it's just fascism. So, you know, what you want is basically a system where people can go to the market, sell what they want, they're allowed to get on with their, their bloody business, no one's actually regulating them overly excessively, uh, but at the same time you've got government running the railway, it's, it's running the ports, it's running key critical infrastructure, and no, private business keep a freaking paws off it. Whereas, you know, what we've got right now is ferries breaking down um, as we're, you know, it's and that's all part of the model, like trying to make it so useless that they eventually end up privatising it. And you know what happens? It's not going to end up, it's not, it's going to look New Zealand Rail. We've already been down that road. Same with our, with our hospitals and sister situations. Uh, and again, I guess in some ways, you know, I think Mexico, even though it has its problems and, and mostly because it's a buffer state, you know, in some ways, it's it, it sort of it, it's geographically kind of gets pushed towards the centre because you've got America with its you know corporate you know everywhere you go in Mexico, it's incredible. There are Coca Cola bottles everywhere you go, uh, and yet there's also wherever you go <laughs> spray painting. Um, you know, I've seen so many pro Palestine uh, forty three, and I still haven't worked out why they obviously obviously I'm open on the airport because I have no idea what forty three is. But they're all these great monuments. They actually have the things built around them because um, basically the the, the, the uh, there's a move really kind of like a knot either graffiti or destroy some of these statues. And so unfortunately you can't really get that close to them and it kind of, I guess, aesthetically in terms of packing the pictures, pretty miserable. But um, yeah, so it's, it, it's it, you can see that at the moment, I can see that Mexico Standard Living is going, actually doing pretty damn well and things are looking pretty good. But I'm also aware that uh, you, that could very easily change with the change of government and with America and, you know, uh, when that happens, it's not going to necessarily be directly. What you'll see is it'll be encouragements of destabilisation with a re- renewal of uh, the cartels, which are really, like, in a way, sort of, it's, it's that high lake dialect where the American can turn and say, oh, well, Mexico's all this, we have to go down there, sort all, actually, all out. Um, while we're here, we're just not going to leave. Um, and that that is, you know, there's been three uh, Rolling Stones and a couple other magazines actually suggested that this is something that's actually very seriously on the minds of America. That I think, and it boils down to actually America's broken that, and, and, and to keep itself afloat, it's looking around for who else has got resources and wants to grab them. Um, so you know, it's, it's leaning. America is leaning very much to that right wing fascism model. Um, but whereas Stalin was, was a left wing model, whereas you know Trotsky offered us a glimpse, a glimmer of another alternative. Unfortunately, history wasn't kind, and. Um, Trotsky kind of did himself no favours because instead of like you know sort of creating a nice government in exile and getting these ideas out there, he kind of pissed off his chief patrons and the end result was, um, well, Trotsky got invited to a picnic with the pick being in the back of his head.